Yeah, and so when Michaela was gone, I took her to the park mm -hmm. and let her off the leash because there were no issues with that. Mm -hmm. um, we were there for a while, everything was normal, and I realized the three-legged dog she hates mm -hmm. was off the leash, mm -hmm. and the owner was coming from the middle school. Mm -hmm. and the basketball courts, you know where that is at the middle school? Mm -hmm. um, let her off leash. I didn't see her in my peripheral. Um, and then they basically got into it. It was very close. So mm -hmm. I like, I panicked. I don't think I handled it that well. She was at 50 at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, I got to crank it up. I mm -hmm. think all over 20. She immediately, when I did that, like veered to the left and responded, I would say positively. Mm -hmm. The problem was the owner of the other dog wasn't watching. Mm. And the dog kept coming up to yeah. Charlie, and then Charlie would snap. Yeah. And like, it, it could have been a dog fight. Like, I would say it was pretty mm -hmm. close. Nothing happened, like, but Charlie was getting very, very irritated. So, again, I don't think I handled, you handled it just totally fine. well, but like, she responded, and the, it was hard for me to figure out what to do next. To get Charlie out of the situation, and the dog kept coming. So, yeah. it was just a. I don't know if you would have specific advice. No, sure. I guess what we responded with was like, we're not doing any off-leash time for the time. So you're, yeah. So you actually handled that pretty good. Okay. Because um, you you jumped, you went to 120, which is the, the hardest thing people have issues with is just going up higher. Okay. So you're trusting, I have this tool. You went to 120, you pulled her out of the situation. The problem was, like you said, the dog kept pursuing. So that wasn't actually on you. Okay. What I would do is in that situation, not having a full recall, is the moment you saw her pull away, at that time trying to get her attention to get her to come to you. And if she comes to you, that allows you to now address the three-legged dog, yeah. right? And I can, you can use your feet to either sure. keep them at bay or whatever, because um, she's now in avoidance mode, yeah. okay? But now since she's in avoidance mode, if the dog keeps pursuing, her defensiveness is gonna be heightened, okay. right? Cause she's like, hey, I already got corrected and I'm getting away from you. And if the dog keeps pursuing, they get even more worked up, correct, yeah. right? Cause they're like, I can't get away from you. So that's where we step in. Um, so once you've stopped it, either if you can't get her attention, you start making your way there so that you can address the dog if the owner won't address their dog, okay? okay. But I, I mean- veer, She like veered left from the confrontation, if you will, and then I know she had the prong on her, but I, then I panicked and I got a hand on her and I kind of like dragged her to the side a little bit. Uh -huh. Probably not the best thing. Um, I left out that detail. And then I just, I got her on the leash and I just booked it and I just kept tapping her. Sure, yeah. The best thing uh, would have actually been, if you're comfortable with it, is hold your ground, right? Oh, Putting her on the leash, right? Yeah. And keeping that dog back okay. and then calling the owner. Because what ends up happening is you're showing her that you're also scared. Yeah, yeah. Right? So actually this happened to me yesterday with a client. We were at Palmer Square. A lady had her dog off leash and I kept telling her to call her dog. And the dog was squirrel hunting, so I wasn't too worried. But eventually the dog ventured away from the owner and then started looking at us and started walking towards us. So then I confront the dog, I stopped the dog, but then when I turned away, the dog kept pursuing. So I confronted and moved in again until I turned the dog away. Okay, so I used spatial body language to get them to deflect but they read these types of things, right? So if, if you go behind a car in response to seeing a dog, they, under, they, in my opinion, understand we're in avoidance because you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. That's why I always tell people, try to confront it as much as possible because you're showing your dog, this shit's gonna happen, yeah. right? So right there, it's kind of like, okay, I got you under control. I got you leashed up and you can place in between and then just yourself, yourself okay. to, to keep away yeah. until you can get the owner to come in and get their dog, okay? <laughs> Set this way. Um, uh, she, she sees you are taking control of the situation as yeah. opposed to fleeing. Because this is your responsibility. Yeah. Okay, once you have her here, she's already in avoidance mode. She's already in like, hey, I'm trying to get away. So then you step in and go, you're good. And I'm going to use my foot to keep the dog at bay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and I've kicked dogs. I've had dogs. You have to, yeah, I've been charged by off-leash dogs where it's boom, split second. And it's either a dog fight or a punch to the chest. Yeah. And I've had people yell at me. And I'm like, look, my vet bill from your dog attacking my dog will be a lot more expensive than a foot to your dog's chest. Yeah. You know, True. and you're gonna, you know, people aren't, don't always always see that they're in the wrong. I've been in that situation too. I just don't care. Yeah. 
Okay? okay. But I think you handled it just fine with what you knew from one class. At the time, yeah. You yeah. Know, one class, I was like, damn, why is this happening? <laughs>